Hello guys and welcome back to Project Monaco with me, Pug Gaming, and we are up to episode 5 already. And things really are starting to take shape. I know we're working a lot on this harbour area and I want to complete this before we start moving into the mainlands just because it's going to really make a good screenshot. Once we start building around this, the harbour in my opinion is what makes this area so special. And as you can see last week we started working on the main harbour front. Today is going to be all about the detailing and we're going to get this place looking spot on. But before we enter the build this is what we are going to try and replicate today. So as you can see this particular screeny shows the detail of what's around and it's quite a quite a mellow area really there's not a lot going on I know there's a little bit of a circus on this screenshot but I'm not going to replicate that I'm going to create it in the sense of it's a standard day in Monaco so we'll have a few little bits here and there but nothing too heavy and we're going to start firstly with this building in the corner and this is the only part so far that I'm not 100% happy with because I did get some of the measurements a bit wrong as you can see from the top left hand corner there should only be one building here However, the way that I started building this higher tier along with the, uh, the cutout of the harbour meant I had a bit more room than I should have had. And I could have gone back to it, yes I could have to correct that, but the amount of time and effort that you've probably seen that I've done so far in getting these two tiers and the harbour to the standard it's at was going to be a little bit too much effort for me. So I'm happy with what it is. I know it's not ideal, I know it's not exact, but we know that's not going to be perfectly available. Well, we know it's not going to be perfect for the series in general anyway. We're not going to get a one-to-one -one build because, <laughs> because of the way the game is. But I think what I've achieved anyway with this area certainly helped. And I wanted to try and create this little area here as I saw in Google Maps. So it's under construction. There's a bit of work being done here. So we've got a, a van outside and some tools. And they're basically refurbishing this actual, uh, I think it's a pub. I might be wrong, but I think it might be a pub. But yeah, I wanted to create some sort of an atmosphere. I mean, what I like doing with my builds is making things tell a story. And I know I'm telling the story of Monaco, but I wanted to create this and tell the story that this area is being renovated. So we tried to copy that as best we could here. And I think that came out rather nice indeed. Quite happy of that. And I do like these um, these walls. Um, obviously, they haven't got any French writing on there. It's all um, British, I think. But it works nicely for this area. Also received some very nice um, constructive criticism about the uh, few videos I've done already. And I'm trying to now implement a bit better in terms of how I edit and create um, my time lapses. So what I'm doing now um, is pretty much just trying to dumb out and cut out all the mundane searching through the uh, search boxes to try and find the asset. I'm just basically showing you what I'm doing, so you're not waste. Well, so I'm not wasting your time, and you know you're not seeing anything happen, and just watching me scroll through the uh, the actual assets that I'm trying to find. I'm trying to just dumb that down a little bit just to make the viewability a little bit more interesting. So thank you very much for those comments by Mr. P. Delmo, the tree expert. So it's very nice to hear from people. If you've um, got any more comments or anyone else has got anything else they would like to say about this, by all means let me know. I'm always happy to uh, try new things out and uh, see, you know, see how good we can get these videos looking. I'm sure they're going to progress in terms of quality as we go on. So what I'm doing here is placing down some of the decals and you'll see what I'm doing is I'm raising them up and down, mostly down here. So they're not as strong because uh, I really like the effect they give. Um, when you're doing it in the sense of just placing them down, sometimes they're a bit too heavy and particularly with the color of concrete I'm using here, they do look a little bit too much. So as you can see here, it does give a really nice view. And I really do love how this little pub area came out. Nothing too heavy, not too many props there. And the combination of two buildings, whilst not exact, I think they look really nice. And I do love the staircase as well, leading its way up to the second tier. This area really does take a big step in realism once you add down the decals. And just a few little props here and there. So we're gonna carry on this, and I'm yeah really happy with that. I do love the... Uh, way you can see through the glass as well and into those tables. I'll be very pleased to hear what you guys' uh, comments are on that. I know, again, 
it's a waste of potential props for the future if we get close to that prop limit. But I do love how it looks. It does add another level of realism into the build. So let me know your thoughts on that, guys. Is it a good idea? Is it a bad idea? It's something that I might implement further along as well in the series. And I know I've spoke about it a lot, but I really, really do love this two-tier um, assembly that I've made with the asphalt. It, it just looks amazing. I really do like it. And it looks exactly like what you see in Monaco. I know it's not the best way of doing so. And well, that's just the complexities of the game and what's available to do so. But I really do like the way it looks. And this area here really now is coming to life. Really happy of how this has progressed. And talking of progression, I have still got my social media networks flying out content left, right and centre. Mostly updates of when the next episode is out and also a few cheeky screenshots. So make sure you're following. Next up, we are moving on to this small little cabin on the corner. And I first started to use the uh, little portable cabins that I used over at the other side in episode two of the harbour and they look good I must admit but it didn't really shout out what I wanted to create this area so what I did find is this absolute beauty on the workshop by Beard Monkey and whilst it's not the right colour it does really look good and I think it looks better um, to have this than the cabins on top of each other looks more realistic and it can really tell the story now we're slowly getting over to my favourite part of this episode and here it is, it's the combination of Armesto's fantastic planters and, well, you guessed it, P. Delmo's small plants and together they are going to create something special and if you look at the screenshot here on the top left hand corner you can see that this area is absolutely plummeted with a huge number of planters and small little bushes and trees inside them. And that's just to create this nice little boundary and a gap between the sort of walking area and the road. And I do love that screenshot. It does look really nice. And I was hoping that we could uh, achieve something similar to it. And with this combination from the workshop of Armesto and P. Delmo, it really is achievable. It takes a bit of time and they are obviously a number of props being added here, but in my opinion, it's certainly well worth it. I would not change this for the world. There's a lot of them, There's, there really is a lot of them. And I was trying to combine them to make it look a bit more natural. And I really do like it. It really does make this area come alive. It just gives that pop. This area, as I say, isn't full of a lot of um, props and things going on. But having this area in the middle, just like on the screenshots you saw, saw earlier in the episode, it does really bring it to life. And talking of bringing this area to life, in fact, the whole of the harbour, I do have plans to make it actually livable. <laughs> and what I mean by that is at the moment, there's nothing going on. You have this beautiful um, build, but there's no people walking around. There's nothing, there's no activities or anything like that. So just to let you know what my plans are. There will be a episode on its own, which will be bringing this area to life. So that'll be including a number of invisible paths, We'll be adding some little routes for the harbour, so we'll get some boats moving around as well. But I just wanted this area to become a bit more buzzing. It's not always going to be a popular area, but in terms of a nice cinematic and to complete this area, we need to have some sort of people walking around and things happening. So that's the plan. Um, we're probably two episodes, maybe three away from that. Um, we'll see how things go moving forward. But that's the plans. We will be making this area come alive and uh, I've got a few little tricks up my sleeve to make that happen. And obviously beyond that, we need to then start working on bringing some actual houses into this area. But that's for another episode. And now we're just working on this area here and the screenshot in the top left hand corner shows you how close we are getting to making this area look like for like. I know again it's not going to be perfect but the flowers, the seats, the chairs, everything together really does give you that feeling of the Monaco Harbour and I'm, I'm super happy. The assets that have been created for this area really are working wonders and I am so lucky to have everyone on board to help me. Even you guys supporting me and giving me tips, ideas, people who live in close or in Monaco with their suggestions, keep them coming. 
I want to know as much about Monaco as I possibly can. Or, you know, anything you know that I don't yet, let me know. Drop a message in the comments below. Hit me up on Twitter, anything like that. You're more than welcome to do so. I'm always going to be listening. I'm always going to be willing to learn more about this beautiful, beautiful country. Now, as you can see, the plopping of these plants did take a lot of time and I apologize for including it in this time lapse. I just wanted to show you that I was placing these all by hand just because in my opinion, this area looks a lot more realistic if you do that rather than copy and paste in big sections. So what we're doing now is we're gonna add the same sort of um, planting and planters here by this tent. And I'm not sure how often this tent stays here. Um, if anyone knows, that'd be very interesting to understand. It looks like it's something that is just erected um, for certain events, but I really did love this, um, this tent. And there's not anything on the workshop at the moment that is of this size for a tent. You could quite easily put this in a lot of your builds and I'm really happy that um, Hike was able to help me with that. It's another asset on the workshop that there isn't anything of it at the moment really. So it's another additional to, additional tent to have. Um, not sure whether he will change it and make them into different colors or not in the future, but for now it's perfect for Monaco and that is the reason why it was built. In this area here, we are now just adding a few little parking lots, putting some lines down, there's a little parking zone here as well. And uh, I imagine the vans would be coming here to drop off goods for the uh, the restaurants that are around here. Obviously there's only one way through here and you've got to go down this strip of road to do so. So again, just making it come alive by adding some vehicles. And as you can see from the screen on the top left hand corner, it really is starting to take shape. I'm so pleased with how this is coming about now. Um, like I say, there's not a lot of detail, um, well not, not a lot of different detail in this area, so just adding what I can see is what is really making this area look nice. And as I said, on this front here, there's not a lot going on here, so what we're doing is just adding a few um, fancy gates, as you can see from the screen in your top left hand corner. There are some fences here, obviously ready for the next event that's happening. Not sure if they're there all the time, I'm sure they're not, but again, just adding to that story. Now we're gonna make a move over to the next of the piers. And this is the main pier actually. This is the pier that during the Formula One, there's a big stage along here, and it's the main pier you see, it's the central point of this whole area. And what I wanted to do here is the asset was created by Mick Crosshill and it was it is amazing, absolutely amazing. The only issue I had with the chosen loops that I am using and the particular style of uh, lighting was the area was a little bit too bright. And I also wanted to chuck down some decals on top. So what I did is once I completed these curbs here is I actually used the plopable asphalt over the top of it just so I could add the um, the decals on there and that's no disrespect at all to Mick he has done a fantastic job and I'm sure that this pier will look fantastic in other people's builds but unfortunately the loot for me it needed to have a bit of a duller look so we are adding those on very shortly and it just allows us to create a bit more in terms of diversity adding some extra decals on there as well and talking of Mick Crosshill, again, a huge, huge shout out and thank you for everything he has done. This whole harbour area is pretty much down to him. All those boats you see in the background, they're all his. There's a few that are already on the workshop, but the majority of them were built, well, especially for my series, which I am absolutely, truly grateful for. And I am going to be having a nice little chat with him at some point, maybe in the... Uh, Two more episodes from now, we're going to have a little chat. He's going to talk us through what he's done, the issues he had, what he enjoyed doing, and what his plans are for the future. So similar to what we did with um, our first podcast, we're going to have a beautiful one. We're going to have a fantastic one, in fact, with Mick Crosshill very shortly. So we'll be able to speak to him. And if there's any questions you have that you'd like me to front him with whilst we're having this conversation, by all means, drop those in the comments below. I'm sure a few of you have got a few boats or so that you might want to have made, and I'll, I'll throw them over to him. He's always willing to learn, and he does love creating the boats on this, <laughs> this game. Now, moving on, we try to replicate this uh, little figurine, and I remember picking up a long time ago on the workshop these beautiful statues. And it's not exact, but if you look at the top left-hand corner, that's not too bad. <laughs> I do like that. It's not exact, I know. 
but it really does look and it gives that feel of this little sculpture here. And you'll notice I've used these curbs quite a lot and I, these are particularly my favourite. They look good but also you can move them up and down as well. So you'll see I put some of these down um, across this pier as well to just combine the gaps. Um, I don't like the harsh gaps between two assets from time to time and putting those into the ground so it's pretty much level really does look good. I do like that. It kind of looks like it's part of the concrete itself. So that's what I that's what I wanted to achieve. And you can see it a bit better here. So this is pretty much flush to the pier itself and it's another way of creating lines and these are longer means that less props are being used and it just looks a lot better in my opinion i really do like that so another little good thing for you guys to do if you wanted to create something similar is just use these use these beautiful curbs and now whilst i've got your attention guys there is an update in terms of the channel I am looking to move at the moment, so in terms of how predictable my videos become, either means it will go one of two ways. I'll either have a hell of a lot more time on my hands to be doing these videos, but in the meantime there will be a bit of time that I'll need to take whilst I um, sort things out at this end. So I'm going to continue to carry on building off camera, well off, <laughs> off uploading to YouTube anyway. And we'll see how we go. I'm going to still try my best to release episodes once every two weeks. Ideally, I want to get that down to once every week. But I'm really open to what you guys think personally. I mean, are you expecting videos once a week? Or are you happy to wait when it's going to be, you know, a bit more quality, a bit more editing and uh, a bit more stylish, I guess. be interested to hear your thoughts on your sort of expectations. You'll notice that the weekly asset roundup has almost ceased at the moment um, I've had a lack of time to be able to do both this series and the weekly asset roundup which is a big shame as I really do love doing that it's a, a great honor to be able to shout out all of these beautiful assets but the time it takes to record and edit does end up being a good three to four hours and at the moment I'm lacking those hours to really be able to do that so for now the weekly asset roundup is on hold it's on hold it might come about again we'll have to see but my priority at the moment is working on project monaco and it seems from my viewership that you guys are all very keen to see how this goes but anyway moving back we are now working on the famous swimming pool in monaco and again what i did here as you saw i think in the last episode actually is i um again added down some of the proper asphalt on top of this one to bring the colour in a bit more with my loot, but also to allow us to put some decals. You can see we put some of the uh, the puddles <laughs> around the swimming pool as well. And we created this little cafe area on the right hand side and created a little, well, I think there's shops from what I recall from seeing on Google Maps in the top hand corner. So we've added some windows and doors on that corner. So that does bring things alive again, again, the actual model created by Mick Cross Hill was fantastic as it was, but it just shows you what adding a little bit more does. It just tells the story and makes things come alive that little bit more, which is really what I love about City Skylines. It's seeing the progression of a fantastic asset into a fantastic build. And there's a lot of YouTubers out there who are able to do that. And I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that don't do it on YouTube that can also do so. Um, and that's what I love about this game is seeing everyone's different view on how they do so. Which brings me back to the point as well. I wonder if anyone has started a map of Monaco. It's been on the workshop now for a little while and a lot of people have downloaded it. If you are creating Monaco alongside me, hook me up, let me know, drop me an image on Twitter, post on my Discord. Whatever you want to do, let me know. I want to see what you guys are doing, you know. There could be some ideas that you thought of that would really look good in this series and maybe I haven't thought of it. Let me know, you'll be very keen to see how you are progressing as well. But anyway, back to the build. We're just working on this little corner here now of the swimming pool, moving things around, getting things level and adding the last part of the road of this northern side. Next episode we'll be working on the corner and we're going to start seeing another couple of great assets as well. So. No major assets released this episode, it's been more of a detail in the completion of the previous episode. 
but believe me there are a lot still to come so do not worry Monaco will be well <laughs> Monaco will be attacking that's the best word to use the workshop again very soon but that brings us very close now to the end of episode 5 and as always guys I really appreciate your time in watching these videos commenting and subscribing if you haven't already hit that like button if you enjoyed it just hit it for me I mean it's a good way to show that I am creating content you enjoy but also it also shows me and helps everyone else see this video as well so that would be a great honor if you can do that for me and of course if you're enjoying this it's the first time you've come or you haven't quite managed to do that yet make sure you hit that sub button you'll be notified as soon as my next video is up and you can also check out my previous videos tutorials and well the asset reviews but before i sign off and before you disappear make sure you stick around because there are some fantastic cinematics coming up and i when i say fantastic these are some of my favorites so far they look absolutely fantastic and i will be very happy to see what you guys think and that's it for me guys again as always thank you very much for all your time hit that like button hit that sub button hit whatever else button you want but i do appreciate your continued support and i will leave you with these cinematics and catch you in the next video thanks for watching and all the best